Welcome to episode 71 of the Truth Quest podcast, the truth about the California wildfires. Before we get started, I want to ask you to do me a favor and share the show. If you're on social media and topics such as white privilege, impeachment, negative interest rates, Walmart, the federal income tax, or the wealth tax comes up, please share the topic-specific TruthQuest episode with your debate partner. The episodes are available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Podbean.com, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere else where podcasts are published. The video versions of the podcasts are available on YouTube, BitChute, and Brighton.com. If you are listening to this on the Apple Podcast app, please take a moment and scroll down on the podcast page and give it a five-star rating. Another way you can help grow the show is to throw a small donation my way at the TruthQuest podcast patronage page. All donations will be used to drive awareness of the podcast through Facebook advertising. See this episode's show notes page at truthquest.podbean.com for that link. And finally, please join the conversation on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash truthquestpodcast. If you are listening to this episode any time near its original publication, November of 2019, you cannot help but be aware of the raging wildfires in California. It's an annual event out there, has been for decades. However, it seems to have become a lot worse in recent years. Why do you think that is? Well, according to the current and former governors of the state, freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the mainstream media, and everyone else on the left-hand side of the political spectrum, the only culprit is, drum roll please, climate change. As you know from listening to episode 7, The Truth About Climate Change, climate change is a hammer looking for a nail. Look, wildfires, climate change. Look, hurricane, climate change. Look, record high temperatures, climate change. Look, record low temperatures, climate change. Look, polar bear, climate change. Look, tornadoes in the Midwest, climate change. Look, the Washington Nationals won the World Series, climate change. Let's review some facts. The science is not settled. It is not clear and there is no consensus of 97% of scientists, regardless how many times leftists say these things out loud. Therefore, the suggestions to fix this not-so-clear problem by crippling the economy with punitive carbon taxes and regulations and limitations on the most cost-effective, most plentiful method of generating energy are not worthy of serious consideration. If the left refuses to have an adult conversation rather than defame, name-call, and chastise any and everyone who does not agree with their unsubstantiated belief in the pending doom of the planet caused by man's activities, then by default, their policy prescriptions should not be taken seriously either. Case in point, current California Governor Gavin Newsom's recent childish tweet to Trump, quote, You don't believe in climate change? You are excused from this conversation. How is that attitude any different from a religious fanatic? You don't believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? I refuse to talk to you. Or, you don't believe Muhammad received the word of God as documented in the Quran? Get out of my face. Or an atheist saying, how can I even have a conversation with someone who doesn't believe as I do? I mean, come on. In all of these instances, a true believer would engage the skeptic in conversation, hear them out, listen to and sort through their objections. But the fanatic, the fundamentalists, want nothing to do with the non-believer and refuse to engage them in conversation. Climate change and environmentalism have in essence become a religion to some, and the fundamentalists among them will not tolerate anyone challenging their beliefs or orthodoxy. They are blinded by their ideology. It's frightening to think people like this in positions of political power. If Newsom's belief in climate change were based on evidence, he would have said something like, you don't recognize the evidence, or you refuse to acknowledge the evidence. But by talking like that, he knows that opens him up to being asked to present and debate the evidence. He knows the evidence is weak and far from irrefutable, so he simply says, you don't believe. Trump and other deniers are con committing blasphemy against the religion of climate change and therefore not worthy of a conversation. So, back to the wildfires. Newsom once said, quote, the science is clear. There we go again. Repeat the lie or fallacy enough times and it becomes true. Anyways, the science is clear. Increased fire threat due to climate change is becoming a fact of life in our state. Drier, longer summers combined with unpredictable wet winters have created dangerous fire conditions, end quote. Well, that's an interesting perspective. So this global phenomenon 
of climate change manifests itself in one small piece of land on the North American continent. I guess when you preside over the Democratic Socialist Republic of California, you can get away with saying shit like that and being assured that no one will call you on it. Let's look at what uncompelling nonsense escaped AOC's mouth regarding the California wildfires. She said, quote, This is what climate change looks like. The GOP like to mock scientific warnings about climate change as exaggeration. But just look around. It's already starting. We have 10 years to cut carbon emissions in half. If we don't, scenes like this can get much worse, end quote. Honestly, I thought Maxine Waters was the leader of the mental midgets in Congress, but AOC is hot on her trail. I can't help myself. I need to take a moment and pick this nitwit apart. Three short sentences, all of which show a level of intellect comparable to a 10-year-old. Quote, this is what climate change looks like. Really? Have there never been wildfires in California before the global cooling, global warming, climate change, extreme weather hysteria? Last year, or the year before, or 30, or 50, or 100 years ago? Can you point to any other factors that might explain the cause of these fires or the escalation of the fires recently? The GOP like to mock scientific warnings about climate change as exaggeration, but just look around, it's already started. These folks are incorrigible. As I said, they have lifetime subscriptions to the repeated often enough and it becomes fact school of public relations. The science behind so-called climate change is far from settled. As a matter of fact, much of it has been proven to have been manipulated on multiple occasions and therefore, shall we say suspect? Republicans don't mock it. They ask questions and for their troubles they get shouted down as deniers and of course told to sit down and shut up. We have 10 years to cut carbon emissions in half. If we don't, scenes like this can get much worse. Do you think Alexandria, I'll be a commentator at MSNBC in 16 months, Cortez, can provide any scientific evidence to back up her purposeful, hysteria-induced 10-year claim? How is this claim any different from other environmental alarmist failed predictions? For example, all the way back in 1798, Thomas Mathis claimed that the population growth would overtake food supply and mass starvation would result unless population controls were implemented. Fast forward to 1970, Peter Gunther, the inaugural Earth Day. He claimed, quote, by the year 2000, 30 years from now, the entire world, with the exception of Western Europe, North America, and Australia, will be in famine. Or what about the 1970 Life magazine article that claimed, quote, by 1985, air pollution will have reduced the amount of sunlight reaching Earth by one half. Or in the early 70s, Newsweek and other periodicals regularly ran articles about global cooling. Or what about Al Gore's 2006 so-called documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, that falsely predicted such things as rising sea levels, Mount Kilimanjaro would be snow-free by the end of the decade, more frequent and stronger storms, the melting of Greenland's ice sheet, there's more, but I'll spare you. Or what about Al Gore's 2009 claim that there is a 75% chance that the entire polar ice cap during some of the summer months could be completely ice-free within five to seven years? Unfortunately for Gore, the ice caps are actually growing. Oops. Or AOC herself, just a few months ago, when she unveiled her Green New Deal, predicted the world would end in 12 years if we don't radically transform our economy to combat climate change. Damn, the timetable of hysteria is accelerating, as according to this dimwit in chief, we are down to 10 years. We better do something quick. Let's shift our focus back to the California wildfires and how the left manipulates their readers, viewers, or followers, and voters. During the preparation for this episode, I read and watched a bunch of left-leaning outlets, explanations, and excuses for the fires. I want to walk you through one in particular that exemplifies the typical response to the wildfires and expose how these folks cherry-pick the facts to fit their storyline. So last year, 2018, when California was burning yet again, Interior Secretary Ryan Zink visited California and said, quote, I will lay this on the foot of environmental radicals who prevented us from managing the forests. This is absolutely on them, end quote. Jeff Goodell, writing for Rolling Stone magazine, attempted to rebut Secretary Zink with this vague and largely baseless rebuttal. Quote, this is completely bullshit. California is burning because industrialized nations of the world continue to dump CO2 into the atmosphere 
and the climate is getting warmer. In California, snow is melting earlier, wind patterns are changing, and forests and grasslands drying up. The average fire season is 84 days longer than it was in 1970s. Just as important, more people are living in combustible places. Since the 1990s, 60% of new homes in California, Washington, and Oregon have been built in zones that are high risk for wildfires. The result, more fires, more people, and more homes at risk, end quote. What did you notice about Mr. Goodell's response? Number one, he never refutes Zink. It's just a typical emotional blustering response. Call bullshit, throw in a few generalities and catchphrases, and make it sound good. Granted, if you only take that one sentence as Zink's only comment, you would argue that he did not provide any evidence either. That's why you have to listen to the whole interview and not cherry pick your quotes. It took 15 minutes, but I listened to the whole interview. And I'm glad I did because I learned a lot about wildfires and forest management and the ineptitude of some Democratic Party-run jurisdictions. I learned that forests require active management and that currently the density of California's forests, the amount of fuel, is at historic highs due to years of neglect. Zink explained that best practices need to be employed, including prescribed burns. There needs to be sustainable harvest, which Zink suggests would be helpful in getting small mom-and-pop mills back up and running and let them graze the forest, in his words. The forests need to be thinned by getting rid of the dead and dying timbers. Zink also said the president is absolutely right. This is about mismanagement over time. He continued by explaining radical environmentalists have filed lawsuit after lawsuit to let nature take its course. These fires are the consequence of allowing nature to do so. Goodell does his readers a disservice by not presenting both sides of the argument. Or maybe that was his intent all along. Chuck DeVore, the vice president of national initiatives at the Texas Public Policy Foundation and a former California lawmaker, so he has seen this up close and personal, how the environmental lobby has interacted with the legislature, has written a series of articles over the last couple of years doing a solid job of getting to the truth of the California wildfire situation. He wrote, This is California's big secret. It's not climate change that's burning up the forest, killing people, and destroying hundreds of homes. It's decades of environmental mismanagement that has created a tinderbox of unharvested timber, dead trees, and thick underbrush. Hmm, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? He continues, quote, Unlike much of the American South and East, California has a distinct wet season with Pacific storms rolling in by November or December and wrapping up by March. In even the wettest years, 2016 to 17, which was the wettest in 122 years, much of California is bone dry by late fall. Thus, it isn't climate change that sets the conditions for fires. It's California's natural weather pattern, end quote. I wonder why Gavin Newsom, AOC, and the media do not mention this very relevant fact. DeVore continues, quote, If federal and state environmental policies continue to make it difficult and costly to harvest timber and manage the fuel load, then the wildfires will continue and they will be bigger and deadlier. This will, in due course, cause some politicians to blame the fires on climate change, end quote. Well, actually, they're already doing that. He goes on to explain what a nightmare it is to navigate California's Byzantine environmental regulatory patchwork just to get a license to clear-cut your own land. It costs thousands of dollars to remove trees from just a small piece of land. He continues by explaining that the hostility towards commercial timber harvesting has allowed a massive buildup of tree density and brush. In another article, he wrote, quote, As for forest management, it's not as if the experts didn't see the problem looming on the horizon. In a 2006 report, the Western Governors Association warned that, now he's quoting from the report, quote, over time, the fire-prone forests that were not thinned burn in uncharacteristically destructive wildfires. In the long term, leaving forests overgrown makes them prone to unnaturally destructive wildfires, end quote. Then he continues, quote, years of not conducting controlled and prescribed burns, which of course reduces the fuel load, has led to unnatural tinderbox conditions. The California forests are denser than they were 100 years ago, which means more fuel, end quote. It looked as if the legislature in California had woken up at the end of the 2018 legislative session, as then-Governor Brown signed a couple of laws that were a stark break from the past fire management practice. Specifically, SB 1260 made three key policy changes. 
It made it easier for California and private parties to conduct prescribed and controlled burns. It largely removed air quality impediments to preventative burns, and it addressed the issue of environmental quality concerns in lawsuits slowing or stopping these needed burns. In another bill, SB 901, it appropriated $190 million a year to improve health and fire prevention and use prescribed burns to reduce the fuel load. DeVore added, Had these policy reforms been in place 20 years ago, along with parallel federal policies, there is no doubt California would have prevented recent years' steep loss of life and destruction of property, end quote. Well, obviously those laws had no impact on the wildfires of 2019, but perhaps there is hope for California in the future. Ah, who am I kidding? They won't stop until the state is bankrupt and or sitting in charred ruins. Even then, I wouldn't be surprised to see them pass one of their infamous propositions. Maybe one to allocate money to prevent more forest fires. I can just imagine someone standing up and saying, Uh, we don't have any money. What we had, we gave to illegal immigrants for their college and health care. Plus, all the sane people moved out of the state. And those that remained don't have a place to live because wildfires burned down all the remaining homes. Let's wrap up this episode with all the talk about the power companies in California and rolling blackouts. It seems odd from a casual observer. Why are we talking about the electric companies in the same breath as wildfires? Well, apparently the power companies in California, specifically Pacific Gas and Electric Company, PG&E, have been linked to actually starting a number of fires in recent years. Equipment malfunctions, power lines coming in contact with tree, limbs, and ground, and poof! So in order to lower their future liabilities, the company is establishing rolling blackouts in high-risk areas to prevent down lines from starting fires during dangerously windy weather. These are called fire safety outages. In the words of that great lyrical poet Meatloaf, Stop right there! If you are paying the least bit of attention, you might have the same question in your head right now that I do. I thought climate change was the sole reason for these fires. Then we find out that poor forest management may have something to do with it, and power companies might have something to do with it. Damn, these climate change alarmists just can't catch a break from reality. The fact of the matter is PG&E is a government-endorsed monopoly for delivering electricity to Northern California. Therefore, like every other government-endorsed and protected monopoly, think DMV, Social Security Office, the IRS, the VA, and dozens of others, They are not motivated by the marketplace. There are any number of things PG&E could do from burying and insulating their lines to proactively cutting tree limbs near wires like every other power company in the country does. Can you imagine a private utility company causing fires and turning off the power to its customers on a regular basis because they failed to properly maintain their power lines? They would be out of business so fast that your head would spin. Oh, and by the way, In the aftermath of the 2017 and 2018 wildfire seasons, PG&E filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this year. What a mess. At the end of the day, if we don't manage the forest, nature will. In the case of California, that state is being managed and governed by a group of loony, bordering on radical leftists, who are not only bankrupting the state with their economic and hyper-regulatory policies, but they are allowing much of the state to burn on an annual basis as the legislature concedes power to a fanatical environmental lobby that levies draconian penalties on those who defy their orders. It's the personification of a dysfunctional government. No, climate change is not the cause of the fires in California. There are plenty of other causes to go around. Ignoring them will not make the problem go away. Please join the conversation on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash truthquestpodcast. 